I'm Nick Powell, reporter for City and State. Joining me on today's edition of Last Look is Councilman Vincent Gentili. Thank you for joining us today, Councilman. Thank you, Nick. Good so you. you were just telling me that your district uh, went, uh, went mostly for, for Republican mayoral candidate Joe Loda, as well as uh, Republican district attorney candidate uh, Joe Hines. So as a Democrat, how have you been able to um, kind of reach across you know, both party lines and, and you know, get reelected yourself for, for three terms? Well, I, and thank you for having me. I, I'm very gratified over the fact that uh, my constituents uh, found me at the very bottom of the ticket. <laughs> 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 and even though the, uh, up higher, the Republicans did well, um, and Joe Loda won my city council district and Joe Hines won the, uh, the, in my district and the DA's race, um, I still got 63% of the vote uh, as a Democrat in the, uh, on, on the last line of the ballot. So I'm very gratified by that, but I think it reflects the fact that uh, I've been uh, uh, present uh, over the years as the councilman um, and delivered uh, uh, a lot of resources in terms of constituent service. Uh, and I've been very focused on, cons on, on serving constituents on day to day because city council is the first line of contact that many people have with government. And, and to the extent that I've been able to uh, uh, work within the council to bring home resources, I've done that too. And combining it with uh, help uh, from the borough president uh, brought over my course of time over $54 million into the district. So that reflects itself in projects that uh, we've, I've been able to, to bring in. The first uh, recreational um, uh, eco dock that the Parks Department has had is now in Bay Ridge. Uh, first one in the city of New York. I'm very proud of that. And uh, we've done a lot with parks. And, and now that my new district includes even more parks, um, I'm going to, I've been known as the $10 million man in the parks department, but I'm going to need about another 20 right, right. To, to really do all I need to do in the parks. But that comes as uh, now that I have that designation of the most senior member of the city council. Now, as the most senior member, uh, you know, you, you, we have a, a changing council with, with, you know, I guess almost half of the council comprised of new members. Now, as the senior most member, what, what is one piece of, of sagely advice you would offer your, your freshman colleagues? Well, uh, my advice to them is uh, put together a good district office because uh, you can spend your time at City Hall and make pronouncements and, and, uh, and uh, pontificate, but in the end, uh, no one at City Hall votes for you. It's the people in your district that vote for you. So yes, it's good to, to, to legislate and, and be active in what goes on in City Hall, but you also have to maintain a focus, a real focus on constituent service because as I said, the City Council office is usually uh, the first contact that people have with government. It could be your community board or your City Council office. Now, the council is also considering a package of rules reforms, um, including a kind of revamping the member items process. I'm curious to get your view on, on the member, pro member items process as it stands now, and are you supportive of the, of the rules reforms that are on the table? Well, I'm, I'm supportive of the fact that it has to be uh, uh, more uh, based on, uh, on other factors than whether or not you support the agenda of the particular speaker. Um, because I'm the poster boy for that. Um, because I oppose certain measures that the, the current speaker has put forward, um, I, as a result, the consequence of that was that I got fewer member items than others um, that are more junior than, than I am. So uh, I've overcome that, obviously, with 63% of the vote and putting together different ways of bringing in uh, capital money. But, uh, but that should never be, because uh, whether you agree with the speaker or not, um, if the speaker takes it out on a particular member, uh, you don't really hurt the member, because it didn't hurt me, but you hurt the district that they represent. You hurt the voters of the city of New York, the constituents, and, and those constituents need to be served. And, and I think a reform that would, uh, would preclude a speaker from taking some um, retribution uh, on a member because of a particular vote or a particular series of votes, I think is a good reform, um, and I would I would support that. Now, you also recently came out against a sort of revised congestion pricing plan put forth by uh, former city traffic commissioner Sam Sam Schwartz. Um, can you kind of explain your position on that and why, why sure. you were opposed to it? Sure. 
uh, it, it was a bad idea the first time. It's a bad idea the second time, particularly for people in, in my district and for most people I in the city of New York. You know, we, we have just been through the era of fees, fines, and surcharges under the Bloomberg administration. The last thing we need to do when we start a new administration is to add another fee in terms of a, a, a toll on New Yorkers picking the pockets of hardworking, taxpaying New Yorkers. It's the last thing we need to do. Um, and uh, that's what this proposal really would do. And particularly for my neighborhood, um, the, uh, we sit uh, between the Verrazano Bridge and the Brooklyn Bridge. Right. And we use the Brooklyn Bridge as much as we use the Verrazano Bridge. So um, to sweeten the deal by saying, oh, we're going to lower the toll on the Verrazano Bridge doesn't really work in the case of my constituents because they use the Brooklyn Bridge as much as they use the Verrazano Bridge. So if you lower the toll on one but impose a toll on the other, there's no real uh, savings. There's no incentive for, for my uh, constituents to, to uh, do that. And then you uh, set up a situation where um, you would have to, Brooklynites, at least in my neighborhood, would have to pay to get in or out of the borough. And that was the whole battle cry of Staten Islanders uh, that they had to pay to get back into Staten Island that led to the free ferry service um, and certainly their own uh, toll system lowered toll system on the Verrazano Bridge. So they were successful in arguing that, and I think we would be in the same position if we had imposition of tolls on the Brooklyn Bridge uh, and, and maintaining some toll on the Verrazano Bridge. It just it doesn't work and imposes a burden on, hard, on, on hardworking, taxpaying New Yorkers that we just can't afford at this point. It's just a bad idea, um, and it, it, it punishes the wrong uh, people, um, and it doesn't guarantee, bottom line is it doesn't guarantee better uh, subway or bus service in those areas that I represent. Uh, there's some amorphous type of uh, a promise that there's going to be uh, that the, the revenue would go to uh, increase uh, bus and subway service, but there's no specifics. Uh, right now, the um, train service, this, the subway service in my district is near abominable. Uh, the R train service, people who in Bay Ridge have come to uh, regard the R to represent rarely because that's how, that's how often the R train comes, particularly when you need it uh, either to get to work in the morning or to get home at night. At nighttime, the R train doesn't come all the way into Bay Ridge. There's a shuttle that they, people have to get off and wait for another train uh, to take them into Bay Ridge. It's a 40, sometimes a 40, 45 minute wait. Outrageous. So um, if we're imposing new uh, tolls for the thought of better transit service, I've not been told that that transit service would be uh, focused on the R train or the N train or the D train. And so I'm not prepared to say that, that I would be supportive of something like that. Now you're also a, a member of the Public Safety Committee. I'm curious to get your thoughts on our uh, new police commissioner, Bill Bratton. I think, uh, I think the uh, Mayor de Blasio has made a good choice, uh, even a great choice in, in uh, Bill Bratton. Um, and it, it, you look at his most recent uh, history in Los Angeles, um, you know, and he's learned some lessons from his first time around in New York, and you could see those lessons were learned when he became chief in Los Angeles. Um, violent crime went way down. Um, and the <clears throat> he basically turned around the police community relations in in Los Angeles, uh, whereby when he left in 2009, uh, the uh, public opinion of the of the LA Police Department was extremely high uh, compared to six or seven years before when he took over. So I think this choice uh, that. The mayor has made, the mayor elect has made, uh, I think reassures those who were concerned that uh, crime would be out of control or on the rise um, because he's a proven crime fighter, definitely law enforcement experience. So it is a good uh, signal to those people who might have been nervous. Uh, and I, th I told them that it was uh, um, a concern they needn't have. And I was correct in, in, in knowing that he picked uh, Bill Bratton. But it also uh, signals to those who are worried about police community relations that Bill Bratton, as a choice, is a proven uh, person to uh, build those police community relations. So I think it's a win-win uh, no matter where you come from, and I'm excited and looking forward to working with, uh, with Bill Bratton. New York City Councilman Vincent Gentili, thank you for joining us today.
For more editions of Last Look, visit our website at cityandstateny.com.